you know, someone might ask, why would we give a presentation of this detail, you know, for projects which are in midstream? And I, and I guess what I would say is that, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions amongst, as you can already hear from the people who actually put the project together about what we thought we could do, how fast we could do it, do that. And I think that the big reason that we felt it was important at a meeting like this to pull this session together and speak about the challenges that we're having as we move forward, because I think it informs a lot of where we think we can go as we look to the future to try to appropriately use models to answer questions and also to appropriately develop and improve the tools that we use to manage nutrients. You know, I think that seeing how the sausage is made has been a, is an important lesson that we all are agreeing as part of this project. So. Um, while it may seem a little odd to give a report in the middle of a project when, I mean, to be blunt, I was expecting to be farther along when I got here and to say what I would be able to say about our project when we got here, you know, that in itself is, is a real key issue. Um, like the other speakers, I really want to emphasize and appreciate the other pe members of our team. Um, these are people that are not necessarily used to working together or, or um, or used to, to uh, fully appreciating what the others do. I mean, I would consider this group, the P-Index group, I would loosely call us the model skeptics group of the, of the project. Uh, you know, we all sort of came in with a big dose of, of trepidation into this process, and a number of our members, you know, essentially were dragged kicking and screaming into the room. Um, then on the, this side, and so, and, and, and I, I, you, can, you can read the names up there, but a, a critical part of working with P indices and that side. You know, on our modeling team, uh, these folks have been just phenomenal to work at with. They've been really under the gun because, you know, it's really the ball is in their court and they're the ones that are taking the arrows right now. I particularly want to note uh, Claire Buffo from ARS and Nathan Nelson from Kansas State University, uh, Anoma, is a, uh, a postdoc that's working, and Amar is a um, is a, uh, a graduate student, and Mike is 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 a is a, a, a research scientist at Nebraska. So um, there, that's our modeling team, and they played a key role. And then the modeling uh, runoff study managers obviously play a key role in terms of producing that information. I think that where the, the some of the issues come in these kinds of projects is that each of these groups of peoples have a little bit different culture of how they approach things and how they think about things. I mean, even on fundamental issues about availability of data, willingness to share data, giving appropriate credit to data. I mean, I've, we've spent a lot of times on some of these just fundamental ethical issues about how you interact as across disciplines in ways that everybody walks out of the room happy at the end of the day. And I think that that's an an important lesson. And as we move forward and think about things like how do we work with runoff studies, how do we make, ensure that data is available from different locations, yet the people who generate that data gave credit. I mean, this may seem like an obvious topic, but it's actually been one of the major challenges that we've had in our area, is just getting access to, to, a, clean, to a data set. And then you start into the process of, of cleaning that data up and the, and, the, and the quality control and that sort of thing. Um, our project really was visualized as a two-step project. First, we wanted to dis look at this issue of working with APEX, what amount of effort was needed to calibrate it. And I'm not going to, you know, we've heard a lot of a, a, a discussion about that, but there's, you know, there is, as you think about it, as you look across even in the literature, and also if you look at projects across the U.S., you know, there's various levels of calibration that have been put into to APEX. You know, it goes from uh, essentially no, there's papers published with no calibration. Uh, there's projects that are based on the, um, um, I'm getting a brain freeze, on the, the tool from Texas, which is uh, the nutrient, no, the, no, this is the, the um, APEX-based, there's an APEX-based project that uses APEX in the back and it has a front end, you know, where the level of calibration is a little unclear. So there's various ranges all the way up to projects that are fully calibrating. We wanted to look at two things. One, how much we had, how much we, how successful we were with different levels of APEX at matching uh, runoff water quality data. And then the next step is then to see how much that effectiveness translated into the recommendations on how we um, evaluated a p-index. And then in the second step of the project that we're not to yet is to use the appropriate strategies to 
uh, evaluate our P indices. So today I'm going to be talking primarily about uh, step one. So, you know, why models? I think, again, we've heard quite a bit about this. You know, our area actually had quite a bit of what seemed like a pretty rich and impressive amount of runoff quality data, 200 site years of data. Um, we, have, we have quite a bit, you know, we had um, fully instrumented, I think, nine, 22 small watersheds in the region. Um, but there are some real true limits to that data set. Uh, you know, there's only 27 soil crop management scenarios, which, you know, sounds like a big number, but, you know, look at the first thing, just in terms of soils, and then you start thinking about crop and management scenarios. We only had three locations that had more than five years of management under a constant, um, a constant management. Well, think really about what we're trying to do with many p-indexes. You know, p-indexes are typically trying to estimate long-term loss events. And so if you have lots of, you know, we, so we have lots of event data, but event data is not really what a p-index is designed to, 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 to work with. So that's why there's a sudden, well, a sudden interest in saying, well, how can we take event data that's really not appropriate to, to test a p-index and translate that into something that's a long-term loss uh, estimate? Well, models have a natural role, and, and really that's what models are designed to do. So that's why this, this focus on models, because without the models, there's, there's a sense that we really don't have data that we can use to appropriately uh, test our p-index. <clears throat> Uh, this is these are the this is just a sense of where the locations are um, today. I'm going to focus on uh, on data that was generated out of these four locations here. Um, we have different sites. Tier one, tier two sites reflects the amount of data that we have along with our information. So we're doing a lot of our model development on our on our sites here with the the uh, tier one sites. And then we're going to be validating the results uh, with our more regional approaches to our regional models against the tier two sites where we have less information. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, uh, anyways, this is just reiterating this issue that APEX has been promoted for use with limited data. You know, how well does it work? <clears throat> so APEX is a, Again, it's a, it's a model that's focused on small watershed scales. You know, our models, are, are, we were working with uh, watersheds that I think are 0.4 to uh, 4 hectares. Um, it's a daily time step. It simulates all aspects of the, of the soil system in terms of crop growth, nutrient cycling, runoff, erosion, nutrient losses. And, um, <clears throat> and again, I want to emphasize how much effort we have had to put into the model itself. Um, you know, Claire Buffo is, uh, I mean, she's a very um, detail-oriented person, very practical person, and has been very good at sorting through and looking at how the model's working in various areas and pointing out issues that we've found inside of, of APEX and working with the, the folks down in uh, Texas to try to help resolve some of those issues. So. Uh, you know, this issue of the fact that, um, that models are not necessarily uh, points that are frozen in time, but are evolving documents, I guess I, guess I would call that over time, and that um, they're evolving and, and improving over time is an important concept. Uh, and it really has become, uh, I mean, if I told you at the beginning of the project that, you know, two years later, we'd be sitting here and just now feeling like we're getting to the version of the model that we want to work with, I, I would have been amazed. So, um, so we wanted to look at uh, how well does APEX predict runoff, sediment loss, P loss without calibration, a best professional judgment approach, and then we are doing a full calibration um, as a sort of our standard. And then we're going to be looking at sort of a mid, uh, a, a kind of a, a mid-level approach where we're uh, taking our full calibration, looking at across the re a region and trying to develop uh, parameters or ranges of parameters that can be set uh, within the region, see if there's essentially a, 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 an informed, an, an infor not, not a, a, a location specific, but more of an informed uh, model for a region. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the types of systems we work with. Uh, half to five hectare watersheds, 
predominantly corn bean or uh, soybean sorghum rotations, uh, though we do have a couple pasture locations, uh, have no-till and reduced till, uh, a bit of a range in terms of fertility, um, <clears throat> and we have a number of, of, of conservation practices within our uh, tier one watershed systems. <clears throat> so um, the best professional judgment model you know, basically is using known information that can be obtained publicly to, to populate the model. So you see things like the, uh, you know, if, and if there isn't a source of that information, you just basically look at the location, you make your best guess at what you think it should be. So, uh, and so there was a, a, you know, we did put together sort of a process so that this would be hopefully a repeatable process if somebody else was to use it about how we would go about uh, developing our best professional judgment parameterization that it was a repeatable uh, process. In full calibration, we started with that best professional judgment and then we started adding as much site-specific information as we could obtain. And this is just a list of some of the types of information. Deanna referred to the level of specificity that's needed with the model. And, and this gives you a bit, a bit of that. And then we then used, again, some of the standard statistical approaches for comparing uh, how those models worked. Uh, <clears throat> so this is just an example of the kind of data that comes out of this. This is event-based data where we're looking at the observed value, the best professional ju judgment value, and the calibrated value on, a, on an event-based on an event-based uh, level. So this is a, a sort of stage one. This is the runoff data, and um, I'll give you some. You can see a little bit here. This. Just the R squared value, I think most of you are familiar with that. You know, zero is bad, one is perfect agreement. The, Na the Nash Sutcliffe uh, statistic is similar, that zero is bad or negative is bad, one is a, is a, perfect, a perfect match. So, you know, so both of those statistics you can look at uh, um, similar, similarly. And then as, um, and I'm not going to go through all the locations, this is just one of the locations. And here's the same data for total P loss, again showing uh, the calibrated, we're getting uh, m somewhat marginal results, but, but plausible and, and poor results with the best professional judgment. But again, because what we're focused on is our P indices, and in our region, our P indices are focused on annualized uh, losses, we then uh, would then take this type of information from the calibrated and, and we turn it into annual comparisons. So we took our event-based calibration for our 19 watersheds in four locations and um, we then summed those that summed the uh, numbers we were getting from each location by year and so that created 97 site years worth of data. And then from there we then were able to across locations start to look at how well uh, this, this model was working. So here we are looking at our, um, our runoff, runoff value and um, if basically here on the X we have the measured runoff, on the Y we have the simulated runoff. Uh, the, the, uh, the blue values are the uh, best professional judgment uh, and as, as was indicated in some of the other talks that the, uh, that the, the best professional mo in terms of runoff, it's a, it's a 0.38 is considered marginally uh, uh, successful with a NSE, R squared of 0.57. Uh, by fully calibrating as you would hope, you get a, a, a much better result. Uh, as we move to erosion, and this is similar to what um, Deanna was finding, we have some much greater issues. The best professional judgment is essentially a, a scatter plot. F with our fully calibrated model, uh, we just get marginal, uh, marginal though appropriate results. Uh, I think part of, you know, and, and this is, I would emphasize that this, these results are after a fair amount of effort to try to go through quality control on the data, and I think it indicates some of the challenges actually, not necessarily just with the modeling, but also with the, our ability to measure uh, on an accurate way uh, sediment loss from our, our runoff plots. Uh, this is, I think, as much a modeling, as much of a technical issue as a modeling issue, if I was to paraphrase maybe Claire Buffo's view of this. Um, our results with phosphorus loss are, are better than with sediment. Um, we get a, 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 a poor result with um, a poor result with the uh, best professional judgment, but with fully calibrated 
we get an acceptable result in terms of our phosphorus laws. <clears throat> so our conclusions then are, you know, best professional judgment approach. We, we need to be careful about the kinds of occlusions we come from that. And in a way, I feel a little funny standing up there because, you know, there seems to be, you know, going through all this effort and proving that you should calibrate a model is, you know, maybe seems like a, a lot of effort, but we have to understand that how much that, how attractive that approach is for many people in this world in, that we live in. Oh, I've got a model, it's giving me results. We don't necessarily, in, an, in, a, in a, uh, a public setting, there's not necessarily that next question of, well, how well was it calibrated? Have you proved that it's working well? So, uh, you know, I think that we've certainly, we've been working on our regional parameterization. We've had some success with that. Uh, there's been some issues in our project. We've had to step back from that a little bit, but I think there is, you know, the full calibration works well, but the problem with the full calibration is if all you can use is a fully calibrated model, you know, you lack a real range of situations and conditions where you can test your p-index. It means that we need to have a lot more runoff data from a lot more locations in order to be successful, or we need to figure out how to get our models to work across more locations and, and make some real strides forward there. Um, I was hoping that I'd be able to talk more unequivocally about our regional parameterization. I can just say that it's, it's showing some promise to be a middle ground. The one thing I would say about this, and it may sound a little bit, a little bit strange, you know, so what we're basically proving is that we have some challenges in terms of using models, uh, you know, in an effective way to, to duplicate runoff data. Well, that's really a separate thing, a separate step from assessing a p-index, right? So most of us develop p-indexes in our states by using professional judgment and said, well, you know, here's the things that we know are important. Here's a general idea of how important we think those different factors are, and we generated a p-index. And, you know, there was some going to data and understanding data as part of that professional, but at the heart it was a professional judgment process. You know, a model, in essence, is a way of documenting professional judgment in a certain sense. So, you know, there, it's not necessarily a given that a poorly calibrated model that gives marginal results won't necessarily result in giving us improvements in our p-index. And so one of the things we are going to do in our project is take our best professional model and we're going to go through the process of, of testing our p-indices and we'll take our fully calibrated model and we'll test the p-indices and ask the question, was all that extra worth, work worth it in terms of the difference in how it changed our p-index? So I don't want to be seen as sitting here. I think, you know, I would be consider myself somebody three years ago as one of the sort of a model basher type person. And I would say that, um, you know, this process has uh, educated me a lot about models and I've, I mean, I always had respect to folks who worked in the field. Uh, uh, I don't want our projects to be viewed as a model bashing process. I think what this project is demonstrating is just how, how important it is to have people from different areas and different backgrounds working together and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of all of our fields. I think that really this project has helped all of us understand the weaknesses that we have on our own fields, you know, the, the runoff folks, you know, we've revealed some weaknesses in their field. Certainly in our field, in, the, in terms of the applied folks, you know, there's some issues that we have to deal with. And we've been, and unfortunately, since we've started with the modeling process, you know, this talk has focused a lot on some of the weaknesses in the modeler field. But I'm really excited about this project. I'm very, it's one of the best projects I've worked on.